So, you want to become a game developer, but you have zero coding skills, no idea where to start, and the only thing that you learned from your college degree was how to print Hello World. Don't worry, you've clicked on the right video. Today, I'm gonna give you the ultimate step-by-step -step guide on how to become an indie game developer in 2025 with the power of ChatGPT or any other AI that's basically gonna do 90% of work for us. Step 1. Idea. This is the part where you actually have to give some time and think because ideas are what makes indie games successful. People are gonna click for cool and innovative ideas and not for your ultra-realistic fire particle system. Even Ubisoft can make that. Now you're probably gonna go to ChatGPT and ask, suggest me some good game ideas. No, this is not the way. ChatGPT is not gonna give you fresh and new ideas. ChatGPT works on data that already exists. So you have to come up with something. Now you don't have to think that much. You just need a small thread of your new idea and then tell it to ChatGPT and ask it to expand. Once you have the initial thread, ChatGPT or any other good AI will help you build on it. You can chat with it and get more ideas for the gameplay loop, the power-ups, and every other aspects of your game. Next step, choosing the game engine. Now there are several game engines for creating a game. For example, we have Unity, Godot, Unreal Engine. Unity is what I've been using in all my devlogs and I prefer Unity the most. I feel like Unity is the best for indie development whether it's a small game or a medium sized game. Maybe I am biased because I've been using it for years and I'm very used to it. Then there is Godot. Godot can run on almost any PC. It's like 50 megabytes in size. I still don't know how they managed to fit a whole game engine in just 50 megabytes. And also it's open source and has a lot of cool features that can compete with other standard game engines. And then there is the beast that is Unreal Engine which is used by both indie developers and AAA studios. Nowadays almost all AAA games are made in Unreal Engine because of the huge variety of assets and development kits available. Unreal Engine is a very good choice if you are planning to build a large scale game. But the downside is that it has really high requirements both to develop the game and to play it. So even if you have a good PC and you made a game, your friend with a potato PC won't be able to play it and give you a feedback. So choose your game engine wisely. Ok so cool, now you have the idea and you have selected your game engine. Great. So now we can start the game development, right? That's so fast. First you have to create the prototype of the game. Every major game goes through this phase where you have to create a basic prototype to test how the gameplay would actually work. You'll use these small basic shapes and imagine your assets will replace them in the future. As you can see on the screen, here's our prototype of a famous game look compared to the final product. Your prototype will basically look like a square fighting another square. But what's important is that it actually works. Major AAA companies create the prototypes of the game and show them to the people funding the game. And once the project gets approved, they start developing the final product. Now while creating the prototype, we need to do the scripting. Every game engine has its own programming language. Since I'm using Unity, I had to learn C Sharp. Nowadays you can create all the codes using AI. I use ChatGPT and sometimes Copilot works pretty well. Then there's DeepSeek. I usually prefer ChatGPT for all my coding and if ChatGPT can't help then I go to Copilot. All these codes can be made using AI. You just have to tell it what to do and it will create the script for you. And sometimes it will create 5 extra errors you never asked for. So you should have a basic understanding of how the programming language works. You can check YouTube for small crash courses to learn the basics like what the start function and update function do in the C sharp. Once you know the basics, you at least understand what's going on when an error occurs. You'll be able to explain it to ChatGPT so that it can fix it for you. Alright, so now your cubes can move and fight. Your game is basically working but it looks like crap. Nobody's gonna play a game that looks like this. So you have to create your own assets and make the game look visually appealing. Because no matter how good the gameplay is, the player should be visually satisfied. They have to look at this game for hours. If it looks bad, then no one's gonna stick around. It's like a movie. It should be a treat for the eyes, the ears and the heart. So make it visually appealing. You have to replace these prototype boxes with assets that you either created yourself or downloaded with permission or you got it from a free asset packs that is available to anyone. For my crazy auto simulator, I knew I wouldn't be able to create 
create a whole town myself so what i did was i created the terrain and the road in blender basically lay out the whole map and how it's gonna look like then i downloaded the freely available assets for the buildings and trees and then added it to my map this saved a lot of time and helped me complete the game on time while downloading the assets there's an important thing you have to make sure that they fit the theme and style of your game you have to decide what kind of art style your game will follow whether it's a cartoony style like the simpsons or sims a realistic style Style like Last of Us or GTA or an anime style like Persona or Shin Megami Tensei. Keep this in mind while downloading the assets or it's gonna look really weird. Imagine playing a game like Minecraft and suddenly Joel from Last of Us appears. That would look like a fever dream. Or worse, imagine Mario running around in GTA shooting people. Now you actually have to play the game. You need to create the new levels and see how difficult it gets, how much you can challenge the player without actually making them frustrated. Or if you want to actually make a rage inducing game like getting over it, go ahead. That's a whole different genre. Just be prepared to throw your keyboard at least once. <laughs> If you're making an endless game, make sure the player doesn't get bored doing the same thing over and over again. The developer has to play the game themselves to find the flaws before giving it to other people. You have to keep playing your game and find ways to make it beyond perfect. The gameplay has to be smooth, addictive and fun. Because let's be honest, you can't make a visual spectacle like the modern AAA games developed by multi-million dollar companies. You're limited in what you can create visually. But what you can do better than them is the gameplay. Your game should have a unique concept and fun mechanics that alone can make it a hit. So keep polishing your game until people really get hooked. That's where an indie game can shine, even beyond the AAA titles. Now you've completed your game after spending months or even years working on it. But just by uploading it on Steam doesn't mean people would actually download it. That's where marketing comes in. You have to promote your game so that people actually get to know that a game like this exists. Tons of indie games are published every week. So to stand out, you need a unique title, a catchy description and plenty of promotion on social media. The title and description can be made using ChatGPT or any other AI. Personally, I think ChatGPT is best at this. Now to market your game, you can upload trailers or gameplay videos on YouTube or you can reach out to YouTubers who make gameplay content and ask them to play and test your game. Basically, find their official email and beg them. Keep emailing until they make a video or block you. Yeah, marketing is pretty tough. I saw this creative who makes really attractive short clips of his game development. These clips are about his upcoming game and it actually hooks people into following the development. Then when the game releases, he already has the audience ready, giving an initial boost. Honestly, this is a pretty smart marketing strategy. After all that's done, you have to wait and see how your game performs. Sometimes it's an instant hit, sometimes it takes a long time to gain traction. The game market is unpredictable and if you're game doesn't become a success you expected, don't worry, try again. Keep experimenting new ideas. If you're truly passionate about game development, I'm sure you'll reach the success you've always wanted. That's all for this video folks. I hope you enjoyed listening to me. If you're new here, consider subscribing and leaving a like. I'll see you guys in the next video.